Hello and welcome to Scott Plays and this week's Topic of the Week video. So, the topic for last week was FFG's unique game system. And I asked, have you tried Keyforge or Discover? Uh, what do you think of the unique game system? Is it a flash in the pan or is it here to stay? Uh, I got a good number of responses this time. Um, first was Rich who said, I say it's a fad and will die off soon enough. It'll never be competitive. And Timo replied to that saying, um, I hope so, but uh, people are going to be hyped. Um, but I already saw people selling those games day one after Spiel Essen. Uh, Nick uh, said, Discover I'd be interested in, not because of the unique game system, but the game itself is intriguing. Keyforge, on the other hand, does not interest me in the slightest. I'd say its lifespan will depend on tournament longevity. And then Gerint uh, said, uh, not tried either of them yet, but going to a key for Keyforge pre-release on the tenth, and looking forward to seeing it, seeing how it works. Uh, so the tenth, that's in uh, four or five days at the time of recording. Um, and then AJ said, just what and why the actual, and how the is this even a thing that? can be a competitive card game, especially when the format calls for using the opponent's deck. Okay, so, my thoughts, um, not quite uh, as strong as AJ's, um, but um, I thought it was quite an interesting mix of response I got there. Some, some interest in the system itself, some interest in just the game, um, particularly in, in Nick's case where he, he said he's interested in uh, discover the game but not necessarily for the unique game system. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's a very interesting, innovative, in innovative um, idea um, but it's not one that really interests me for the idea itself um, if there were to be a game that particularly interested me but which used the unique game system then yeah I may well buy it but the current offerings um i tried keyforge at uh tabletop gaming live um which uh if you've seen my videos video on that you will have seen that i mentioned that um yeah that game as i said in that video it wasn't very uh interesting to me it pretty weak gameplay not very many choices the um the sort of the unique selling point for that particular game seemed to be the unique game system and nothing else um discover seems to be more of an interesting idea of a game but again it's not the game isn't enough to sell itself to me um yeah, it's there's not enough game there for me to ignore the unique game system um, because I think there are negatives to the the this um, unique uh, system um, and particularly for a game of that type where you're paying actually I don't know how much it is here but I've I've seen it. Uh, quoted as being like sixty dollars in the states, and that is a lot of money. Even if it's only forty dollars, and sort of 
30 to 50 quid here it's it is a lot of money uh, for a game where you don't know exactly what you're getting in the box um i mean I, i've said numerous times before gameplay is the most important thing to me um and part of that is um, I like to be able to research a game, see how it plays, watch playthroughs, and from that ascertain whether it's a game that I'm going to get uh, enough plays from to justify the cost, whether it's something I think the game group that I go to will like, um, does it have um, solo play, you know, all those questions I like to get answered before I even consider putting any money down. And a to a degree, with a, the unique game system, with the way that you get different components, and not only different components, but different rule sets within the game means that those I yeah a lot of those questions I just cannot answer and so um, yeah particularly in the case of Discover it's not and Keyforge they're not games that I am going to buy for that reason um, yeah as I say if a game were to come out where it were clear that there was enough game in there for me then yeah I might consider it but it's such a big negative the the unique system um, that I don't know I I don't want to say I will never buy a game that uses that system but I'm very unlikely um, I want to see where FFG take it I think it is, as I said, I think it's a very interesting idea and it's a, it's a system that has never been seen before really. really. I mean, you've got um, things like um, trading card games that come close to that kind of thing where you've got a uh, random distribution of cards within packs and that kind of thing, but... Um, even those you're not yeah with the with the thing that makes the the unique games different is that every single copy of yeah in the case of keyforge every single deck is unique there is when you buy that deck you are not getting a deck that somebody else has bought whereas with um say magic um although the distribution is random there is a chance that you could buy two packs and have exactly the same cards in it uh yeah the another thing that i'm i'm really fascinated by is just how they do that um, because they've got to be able to, you know, and, and and particularly in the case of Keyforge, where the the backs of the cards are unique as well. So they've got a, um, from what I understand, there is a computer algorithm that creates the graphic that goes on the back of the cards. So that part of it, um, whilst computationally intensive is pretty simple but then that file um, and the the different card fronts are all combined sent to the printer they do one print run of that version and uh, yes yeah, stick all the cards in a box and send it out and then the next thing they print is completely different card back completely different set of card fronts and it's like how do they do that because from my understanding I mean I've not um, 
uh, not produced a game, so I don't know exactly what happens. But um, I, you know, I listen to a lot of sort of industry podcasts and uh, uh, and am in a lot of the industry Facebook groups and that, and a lot of this gets stuff gets discussed. And my understanding is, um, the majority of uh, manufacturers are set up to take one set of files and produce thousands of copies of exactly the same thing and so yeah the what are they doing do they i mean do do ffg now essentially own their own manufacturing plants which they can feed the graphics and information into uh in sort of real time um are they producing like thousands of versions which are all then sent to the printer and the printer's told to print one copy of the first file then switch to the second file, print one copy of that, and so on. I just don't know. And um, from what I've heard, a lot of the um, people that actually do printing, they, they don't know how FFG are managing to do this either. Um, so, yeah, that side of it really interests me. Um, and, yeah, as I said, I'd like to see where they take this idea in the future. Um, but based on Keyforge and the Discover games, yeah, they're not going to be ones I'm playing into, I'm going to be buying into. So the other thing with Keyforge is that it is a competitive card game and it's aimed at the same market as Magic the Gathering and um, FFG's LCGs and games like Ashes, you know, those kind of um, games where uh, the players will expect to be able to go to tournaments and um, FFG have uh, released their details of their um, tournament formats for Keyforge and they're just bizarre I can't remember the exact details but it's um, like AJ mentioned um, one of the formats um, you take your deck you sit down to play your opponent and then you swap decks so you play your opponent's deck um another one was um you play like three games and you play once with your deck once with your opponent's deck and then you bid uh, what they call chains um which is a way of limiting the strength of stronger decks and that it can come up whilst you're playing the game as well and basically it limits your hand size um and yeah so so yeah in this three game format uh, for the third game you you bid chains um to be able to pick which deck you use and um Oh, and they had a, a sealed format as well, where the tournament organisers will have enough decks for all of the participants. They will all be opened, and then players will bid chains to get a particular deck. So, um, um, because, yeah, when you open the pack, you there's a card on the front that shows... The, there are I think it was three factions in each deck and it shows which factions are in the deck so that's all the information you're going to get and it'll be held up and said who who wants to bid how many chains for this deck um, and you don't know what cards are in there You, it, it's just bizarre they're having to come up with these really strange tournament formats just because of this, the way the unique game system works, and yeah, I can. I think the the sealed format is probably going to be the most popular of 
the the formats um maybe the three game system because that does have you know you get you get to play your deck you get to play your opponent's deck and then you get to bid and people will if they have a really strong deck they will bid on that um, and actually that brings up the other negative thing i think there is with this unique game system um ffg have said that in keyforge some of the decks are stronger than others that is just a, a factor of the way that the game works um and i think you're gonna have the same with discover as well where is not so much that one version of the game is stronger than another, but it's a better game. It, the combination of characters and scenarios and land types um, just make for a better game than in a different one. And you don't know what you're getting when you go in. And it, it will... I think the community will discover... Um, which combinations work really well together and there may well end up being a third party uh, market for either the entire game and um, or components of the game um, but yeah buying retail you don't know what you're going to get and I just that I don't, you know, it's like I I have played Magic, and, you know. With that, you kind of and I and other, random distribution games I've played, uh, and you kind of accept that there is this random distribution and there is a, a certain percentage chance of you getting particular cards, and, you, you know, it's never guaranteed that you're going to be able to get. A certain card but you know that if you buy a certain number of packs your probability of getting um, all of the common cards is almost guaranteed uh, the sort of uncommon cards you've got a certain you'll get a certain percentage of them and then you'll get this smaller percentage of the rares and you know, super rares and and whatever, whatever other rarity they have, and you know you you know that going in, and you you sort of you have an idea of what the possibilities are. Um, but with the yeah with the unique game system, yes, you know there are I I don't know how many there are, but let's say there's. In Discover, there's six different types of characters. There are, uh, say, 20 scenarios and, uh, say, eight land types. I don't think there's even that many. I think there's, like, four land types. And you're going to get two land types, say, ten scenarios and three of the characters. I don't know if that's correct. It probably isn't. But let's say that is the distribution. You still have no idea what you're getting. Um, and yeah, you, okay, you could buy multiple copies. And um, I've not looked into it enough to know whether this is possible or not. But um, from what I can gather, I think it's not possible to sort of buy two copies and take the bits that you like out of one copy and combine them with the bits that you like out of the out of a second copy um i think that ends up not working um but yeah as i said i'm not certain about that it may be the case that that actually works uh but even if even if that does work that means you just to be able to get the game that you want to play, you've got to buy multiple copies unless you get really lucky and you get what you want straight away. And, yeah, so... You know, I, it's, it's one of those things where 
I like one type of random distribution, but the other type, it just it doesn't sit well with me, and I. I wonder how many, other players will actually. Um, buy into that, and I think that that ultimately is going to be the thing that determines how. Long this, unique game system, lasts, and how many more games that they produce in the. Uh, with that uh, idea behind it um, Keyforge I think is probably going to be more successful because it's cheaper Discover I think yeah you're going to get some people buying it I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as popular and I suspect it will be the first and last unique game system board game um, I can see them doing more card games with the the system. Um, yeah, I can. You know, it, it's it's easy to see them doing something like a Arkham Files version of Keyforge or something very similar. Uh, maybe Star Wars. Um, but yeah, I think board game side of things I don't think that's going to last very long card game it's going to come down to tournament play and how well the tournaments work that could stick around for a while anyway it'll be interesting to see how things go and um, yeah that's probably about all I want to say on that um, so thank you for watching uh, I hope you join me again for another topic of the week in the future uh, as I said in the last one I'm working on some um, uh, game overview videos which I'll have done fairly soon um, not sure exactly when I will to get them finished but they're being worked on they will be up fairly soon I've got um, Splendor Azul um, there's one other one that I wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, Yggdrasil, which I managed to get very recently. Um, I want to do an overview of. Um, I think I'm going to do an overview of Root fairly soon. I wouldn't mind getting a couple more plays of that. It's yeah, such a complex game that it needs a few plays before I can do a, an overview of it. Um, but yeah, the um, those four games um, overviews of those are in the works and will be coming fairly soon. Um, so yeah, hope you will re hope you will join me for uh, those and other videos in the future. And uh, thank you again for watching.